Captain Logan, and look, it's my son Jason it's me. filling in for Austin the Day Ghost tonight. Austin is on vacation out of town, and instead of just skipping this week or me going solo, uh, we decided it was a good time to bring uh, Jason on guest for this show because uh, this just happened to line up this way. The very next requested movie is an anime aged uh, aimed very much at Jason's age group and is of a genre and style that Jason is already kind of a fan of at least in manga mm -hmm. uh, so it just seemed like a really good fit uh, tonight we are talking about your name which released a kind of kind of an unlikely title I uh, no idea what to, to expect going into this mm -hmm. uh, this was released in 2016. Uh, in Japan, and I think we got it shortly thereafter. It went worldwide pretty quickly. Uh, this is a Shinkai film, and um, Makoto Shinkai is a, a, a name that I've heard bandied about, but I don't know that I've ever seen anything by him. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have. Uh, I have not. But, you, but you've read more manga than you've even seen of anime. Right. So all of this is still kind of new to you, I uh, like it as me, even though you're already, even though you're more of a fan of Japanese entertainment I'm than I am. I'm familiar with the storytelling, I guess I could say, but like, and like the pacing and stuff, but not as much the medium that it's in, you know? Sure. Uh, and there's a few really cool uh, anime films that I've had like requested on the channel now, uh, or that I've happened to seek out on my own that I should show you that you haven't seen yet. Uh, you haven't seen a lot of Miyazaki yet. You've, you've seen maybe one or two things. Have you, or maybe maybe you haven't even. I, I have not. I okay, have so hilariously, this is more in Jason's wheelhouse, but I'm actually more experienced in it than Jason is, which yeah. is really weird. Like, you've not seen Spirited Away yet. No, and, I wish. Uh, you, you haven't seen uh, Nausicaa, uh, which I adore. That was requested years ago before Austin came on the program. Mm -hmm. uh, but then a lot of those, I, I haven't seen either. I mean, I haven't seen Howl's Moving Castle or, you know, some, some of the big ones. So, uh, you know, all cards on the table, uh, one of the reasons people request these kinds of things uh, is to get me out of my comfort zone and uh, to get me more experienced in this stuff. And uh, the more I see of these things, uh, the more um, I'm uh, appreciating them and uh, seeing a lot of patterns in the conventions of the medium. And uh, I, I'm more and more getting really inoculated to, and I say this every time we, I, I review one of these, uh, but more and more I'm, I'm getting really inoculated to, uh, like, over-the-top reactions to things. Mm. I, yeah. Which I don't think bothers you at all. It doesn't, just because, well, and I watched a lot of Pokemon growing up, so that, that kind probably of, helps. yeah, that did help, because, like, I was just used to... Like, I did have that one anime that I watched growing up, and Pokemon does a lot of that, so... Yeah, it's a real acquired taste for me, and I don't tend to like the more uh, comedic uh, animes, you know, the more the more comedy-driven things. <sighs> uh, but the stuff that, like, occasionally is interrupted with just... Uh, real exaggerated facial expressions and like tears flying out of people's faces and stuff uh, used to turn me off real hard and I've, I've, I've come to just accept it as one of the conventions of the genre. I bring that up to say I uh, and we'll, we'll go ahead and get into this movie. I'm going to make Jason do the plot synopsis because oh, okay. uh, Austin always does so you okay. know you're filling in for Austin yeah. uh, but I read a, a review or two I uh, were were people were that was like one of the only complaints people had with this movie was was a uh, you know exaggerated comedy and I was like I don't know they didn't jump out to me with this one too much yeah too much there were a few like it it did have its comedic places definitely but I mean it wasn't but I didn't think in comparison to other stuff I've seen it was real over the top right and they were situations. Where a, a a you know weird supernatural thing has has happened that nobody in real life has ever experienced, so you would react, you would be pretty surprised by it. I yeah. uh, and things played by and again I'm just I've adjusted now, right? I uh, things played for comedy that I don't find necessarily funny, but get why it's why somebody else would, and that it's right. again a, a convention in Japan that's not really here so much. So just kind of accepted it. I uh, it, it was it was easy to. Um, appreciate that this was aimed at a younger age group and that this is kind of Japan's equivalent to, uh, you know, high school 
dramas here, and I would much rather this than some, you know, U.S. high school dramas. Uh, yeah, and, I mean, that's what I have with a lot of, like, I, I feel like they do, um, at least now, uh, they do the romance thing a little bit better than us, I think, um, like, at least a little bit. Yeah, at least in drawing its characters more and not being maybe quite as forced in certain situations. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into what this movie is about. So, like I like I said, I kind of alluded to... And by the way, thanks for joining us live if you're watching right now. I appreciate you watching after the fact as well. I uh, just quick plug for what we do here uh every week we uh, we we do a requested review uh somebody on patreon we have a we have a long list of these i uh, there's there's a quite a um backlog right now uh patreon.com slash geekvolution the 15 dollar tier gets you a review of a m movie or a tv pilot or a comic miniseries graphic novel etc four to six issues i uh, generally speaking and uh, the 30 dollar tier gets Gets you a full-on commentary. So, anyways, uh, I alluded uh, at the beginning uh, to this as a like supernatural romance, mm -hmm. and I uh, I came into this thinking it was full-on kind of high school drama, like I said a second ago, and it it feels that way. And then, and and you know, there, there's this like kind of odd, confusing supernatural component that we don't understand right away. Uh, that's kind of, kind of a conceit. And then there's a switch somewhere in the middle where it becomes a very different movie than the one I thought I was watching. Yeah. And that's when I got much more on board with it. Not to uh, get too far ahead on, on my own opinion of this. Yeah. It's, and I mean, we'll get into it, but uh, it, that was kind of one of the things that was kind of weird about it was, um, it was, because I haven't watched that many anime movies, so it's like one like hour and forty five minute thing, but like the first forty five minutes of it is like super slow, and then the rest of it moves pretty fast. So, at least, I think. See, I didn't think it was slow so much as just, just I didn't, thing? I didn't find it, like, especially funny, and it was a situation that I had seen enough in things where I was kind of rolling my eyes, I was like, okay, this is the, you know, Japanese uh, animated version of this thing. Yeah. So, the, the, and I'll let Jason do a full-on synopsis, but the initial premise of this is very Freaky Friday, it's, you take a... Uh, you take a boy and a girl instead of, you know, a mom and a daughter or whatever, and you uh, switch their their bodies. And we've we've seen that in, you know, a hundred uh, genre stories, and, like, we always have to do the body switch episode in any sci-fi show that's episodic. Uh, like, you know, Star Trek does it a lot, Smallville does it, like, like you know, Buffy does, I think Buffy does, Every, everything ends up doing that episode, right? Yeah. And uh, it, it takes a while before you even realize for sure that that's what's going on here. Right. And I didn't know what the what the take was. I didn't know what the spin on it was. And then when we finally get to that, there's a lot more weight to the story. Yeah. And you realize retroactively that everything has been building to that all along. It, it, it doesn't actually come out of nowhere. It just feels like it does not it's supposed to. Yeah, which... Meanwhile, means... you've been drawing these characters all the way through... And coming to appreciate them and understanding them as uh, as individuals and uh, very believable, um, uh, you know, specific to themselves as individuals. Yeah. Um, and I think... Unique was the word I was looking for. Yeah, and I think that's kind of... I, I think that's why it's it does that story a bit better than other things I've seen. Oh, yeah, uh, no, no doubt. because of how it sets it up. Um... But yeah, it's it's about this um, girl who lives in this like I don't I don't really know how small, but like kind of small village um, that uh, it can't be more than t like fifteen hundred two thousand people. Yeah, like it has like a high school. Yeah, like a pretty big one, but it's. 
some of the not. things it doesn't have were perplexing to me. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. We're, we're told that, and and I love how living and breathing this small town feels, and like it's this, it's this little uh, like ocean village that like nobody in Tokyo seems to even know about. Like it's so remote, but we're told that they don't have a cafe, which I maybe buy. Right. But they also don't have a dentist. Like, no, this is the a... dentist. The dentist just closed super early. Oh, I thought they said could. they just didn't have one. No, I think it just said that the dentist like Wait, really closes early. Oh, I thought they said we just don't have a dentist. Okay, anyway, I don't get stuck on that. Yeah. But I thought that was weird. It's like this is a really underserved town. Like you, you, you had uh, the um, you, you had her friend. That was like, I don't know what I'm going to do after high school. I guess I'm going to stay here. I'm like, you should open your own business. There's lots of underserved areas. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, so. Um, and as always on the show, we're going we're gonna to spoil everything. Yeah. So, spoiler alert, but Jason's going to give us a rundown of the, of the story. Don't, yeah. don't get too nitty gritty with it. Right, I won't. So basically, there's this girl who's living in a small town and this guy who's living in Tokyo. And they just mm-hmm. randomly just... Dis- uh, they're both in high school. Yeah, they're both in high school, and they randomly just start, like, just randomly switching bodies every couple days or something. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of random when it happens. It's, it's not real consistent, yeah. Yeah. And then um, they – she gets the guy to, like, go on a date with another girl, and then uh, the same night that that's happening – meteor falls and then uh the girl in the story um sees the meteor and then we don't really know what happens like they stop switching with each other after that that this is kind of the big twist yeah. and we find out that um he was actually switching with someone with a dead girl who was living three years ago and so the events we've been seeing happen simultaneously in 2016 and in uh, 2013. 2013, yeah. So, um... And there's a lot of breadcrumbs for that uh, up until you, you, you actually find that out, where right. there's a lot of hints about it, which is really cool. Yeah. We've actually been living more in the 2013 side, and the first time we get a date is in 16, which really throws you off. Yeah. And intentionally, when we jump back over to to his world, and it's it, it's it's kind of great. Yeah. Um. So he basically spends the rest of the movie trying to uh, evacuate everyone out of this town. Um. He he tries to find her, and he finds out that it was three years ago, and that's yeah. where the twist. And then, um. I I can't remember exactly what happened. Something about drinking alcohol or something and then oh <laughs> uh yeah they've got the they've got the sort of mystical sake yeah yeah uh so there's this mystical component to this that's about uh the way i uh, like time works the way i uh, the the god of this world uh, there's there's kind of some like japanese mysticism um deals with time and human relationships and how those things are intertwined. And it it uses... And this is a real typical kind of standard um, symbol, but it works for it. The, like, like, you know, intermingling strands of time where you you have the kind of wise sage grandmother character. Yeah. Uh, That's that's also something of a standard character, but I liked her a lot. I I liked her a lot. uh, Who who talks about that. It it works in the movie as a metaphor, but it's also a a, a very literal thing Mm. about uh, how uh, people's paths cross and come apart and I uh, like, like may come back together. And there's kind of a question of, I uh, of, of destiny with that. And I like that it doesn't get too in the weeds about the, about like, I uh, what's possible in time travel. And I, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, paradoxes yeah and and those kinds of things like i I think it's it's consistent enough and i have questions about it but i but i didn't find myself ultimately caring all that much about how it all worked right because they just 
it just makes the movie kind of fun and different, but also, like, like it definitely wasn't what I was expecting. Yeah, no, me neither. Uh, I was absolutely shocked when we get the reveal that it's uh, the relative time thing and that there, there's there's actually three years in between. Uh, and my mind started racing, wondering what what caused it, like if the comet... I uh, like affected space time somehow and all of that and I can't tell if that's actually part of it or not and right. ultimately I didn't really care like and it didn't really it's, matter yeah it, it it ends up just being kind of a a, a beautiful metaphor I uh, the like I said the idea of I uh, people's you know there's almost like a doctor who idea people's individual I uh, timelines crossing and I I don't know, I, 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 I kind of uh, wasn't too concerned with, like I said, paradoxes and I, like whether it really made sense that you could go back and change anything. Um, yeah. It, it, it worked fine in the context of this. Yeah, I agree. But anyway, sorry, I'm starting to get, I'm hesitating because I'm getting into analysis places and I don't think we actually really finished our, our synopsis. I don't uh, really know what else to add. Well, you I get don't the, really know what to... you get the, the, the magic hour bit. Yeah, that's true. Uh, which is probably the most impactful and powerful moment in the movie. Yeah. Uh, we're, again, this this kind of uh, mystical and romantic notion uh, that there's a point in time every day where, uh, like, like, timelines kind of converge, um, and, that's, and that's Twilight. It's like you have these different... Uh, mythical explanations for things that these days we might actually have scientific explanations for, but it, it handles them in really traditional uh, I want to say even like bordering on Greek mythology ways but of course there's a lot of uh, if not actual like pseudo uh, like like Eastern mythology stuff here yeah. uh, like which is not something I've studied stuff. a lot so uh, I don't I don't really know anything about that, but I saw a lot of uh, parallels to um, to you know to, to some Western stuff to mm. to, uh, to Greek mythology. Um, but anyway, so you've got this uh, you got this really cool idea where um, those two characters in different timelines uh, are able to come together at twilight and finally meet each other when they've been crossing over between each other's bodies. And I, uh, it's, it's just this really like bittersweet, I, uh, like like wonderful moment. Because they've, it's it's kind of hard not to jump all around the 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 story talking about this, right? Yeah. Um, they have. It, it, this is a little bit of a Back to the Future idea, uh, where they're forgetting each other, uh, because the timeline has been changed. Yeah. And. I've I've got questions throughout about uh, like why sometimes they remember things and sometimes they don't. That seems a little bit convenient in places. Yeah, because you do have that idea from the beginning where they think they're dreaming, and it's that idea that uh, when you wake up, you start losing a lot of your of of, of uh, the very intense dream that you had. Again, there is an actual scientific explanation for that, but we, uh, which is that dreams don't stay in your long-term memory. Um, but in in this, I it's that you know, like mythical explanation thing. I sort of like the Bible has to tell you why we have rainbows. Yeah. <laughs> I and and so. Um, this spoke to me. I, I assume this this would speak to lots of people because uh, we've all experienced this, right? Uh, this idea that you had a dream that was so vivid and it felt like you were living somebody else's life. Surely it couldn't just be a dream you had. Surely uh, you, you must have been like in another dimension or uh, in somebody else's head for a while. And so this is exploring that as a literal concept. Yeah. 
And so from the beginning, they have difficulty remembering what happens to, e to each other when they go in, in the other person's body. But they remember enough, maybe it's just the repetition of it, but they remember enough that they're able to have conversations with each other through notebooks and give each other rules for like, d d you know, do this and don't do this yeah. when you're in my body. Uh, and that, by the way, I speaks to a lot of... Uh, fun and very realistic, believable uh, kind of gender issues with this. Like, you know, what what are the things that I... And they still feel like unique and specific enough characters, but you know, what are the things that I, the the boy is most focused on and what are the things the, the girl is most focused on? And I, they, they do the obvious, but you kind of have to, kind of typical stuff of if you're in the other sex's body... Uh, you're going to be curious about the differences in body parts, and you're going to explore that. And uh, the movie handles that, I think, in the most mature way you could expect it to. Yeah. And, well, it, and they do it on both sides, Yeah, which, which I appreciate. Yeah. Uh, and they make a joke out of it, but I, like, a teenage audience uh, is going to find that awkward and kind of disturbing and funny all at the same time. Yeah. So it was appropriate for the for the sake of this. Yeah. It's one of the first things that happens, and I was a little bit worried about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the start, I was like, ooh, am I going to have to turn this off for, for Jason? Like, is this going to get too explicit? Right. Uh, and, and it doesn't. It goes just as far as I think it, it, it has to. But the other thing it does that I appreciate is it's not just that. It's not just superficial. Ooh, I've got girl parts now. It's not just that. It's, uh, the like, what can the two of them teach each other uh, in being each other's bodies? How can they make each other's lives uh, better? And in some ways, they make them more, you know, complicated and, and, and worse on accident. But for the most part, they're actually kind of improving each other's lives. And then the the real romantic notion with all of that, and I thought this movie was uh, was was wonderfully romantic. I uh, one of the most romantic films I've seen. I uh, like like legit legitimately romantic. I uh, is is the idea that I uh, because. Like, they hardly ever meet, like, they, they at all before the Twilight moment. And then only for, like, a minute and a half. Yeah. But they know so much about each other because they've literally walked a mile in each other's shoes. Yeah. And I, they, they know each other intimately without ever touching. Right. I love that idea. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. It's a, it's, it's a neat idea. Um, and it's something that, like... Usually, like, these, like, body swap uh, stories are with two characters that know each other. So, like, it was very, um, it, it was very interesting to see it with two characters that don't know each other at all, you know? Yeah, and that's how, that's how they, they learn about each other. Right. And then the irony is, when you get to the end, they, they know, I uh, everything about each other, but they can't remember any of it. Right. And how easy would it be for them to just brush, brush past each other and never get together? And I found myself, I bought into it hook, line, and sinker. I, I found myself desperate for them to finally get together at the end. And you have, we, we jump ahead five years, and you have, like, a number, what is it, two or three different places in that last ten minutes yeah. where they keep crossing paths. Yeah. They're like, okay. Is this going to be a really sad ending where they just never ultimately get together? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was very and I mean, they don't what's nice about it is they do it so like perfectly where they don't drag it on too long, but it's not like too short. Like they cross paths like like more than once and they I mean, it gets you really wanting to them to do it even before they, you know, do the time jump. Yeah, and it's really sophisticated about it because it keeps track of the nuances and subtleties in the timeline that's been slightly altered. Yeah, yeah. And so he, it's it's complicated and it breaks my brain, but he meets her before he meets her. Yes. 
So uh, when when she gives him the ribbon on the on the train, which is also, which is also, and he's looking for her at that point. Yeah, am I right about? Her? No. Or is she looking for him? No, she's looking for. That's him. what it is. It's, yeah, which is also really interesting because because you have this uh, time difference. She goes to Tokyo to try to find him, and she does, but he hasn't met her yet. That's or what it been is. Been in her body yet because it's been three years, and so he doesn't really remember her that much because he saw her once and then um and so there's like a really um like heartfelt moment where he remembers oh that's that's that one girl you know yeah i i'm not sure what the movie in and i'm maybe it's ambiguous on purpose uh is saying about fate versus free will but that stuff is certainly in there mm-hmm. i we're you because you have the time travel component it's hard to say that it's full on destiny because the an actual timeline has changed mm-hmm. you know what i mean like the first time around 500 people in that village die along with her and it is again maybe sort of ironically i don't know if that's the right word uh her power because she basically has superpowers her like like her family apparently has always had the ability to do this, and like it comes up every now and again where they just start switch. Like it's because of her they switch, not him. But she has died already, so that's interesting. Oh, what? Yeah, because it's it's her grandmother that's talking about it being in their family. Oh. So even right. though she's dead already, she's switching with him in the future. It all sounds really convoluted unless you watch it. Like, yeah. it works. With the, as I'm sitting here explaining it, I'm like, anybody that's listening to this that has not seen the movie is going to think that, the, that this thing is all over the place. It makes no sense. Yeah. But, like, it makes really, it makes a lot of sense when you're, like, watching it <clears throat> and then you think about it. It's like The Matrix. Yeah, I mean, I see it as kind of the if you build it, he will come thing where like God or the universe or what have you has for whatever reason singled out these two people and given them a chance at happiness Mm -hmm. in admittedly the most convoluted possible way. (laughs) Like, I don't know why the 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 powers that be are are like meddling in the way they're meddling. Um, But it's a. but I don't know, it's it's so uh, counterintuitive in a really creative way to give her this ability, but she has died already. Mm-hmm. This is the kind of thing we would never do in this country. And I say this every time we I, I review a Japanese thing, but just all, all these things that here would, would seem like insane risks to take. Yeah. That we do very confidently and straightforward and with no worry about losing anybody uh, in, in animes. And it just hurts my feelings that we don't make stuff like this. Mm. Uh, and I don't mean with all of the conventions, like, I uh, there's there's stuff that just wouldn't translate as well to a mass audience here, although, or, or at least I should say, wouldn't have, because I found myself comparing this a lot to, like, Disney classic movies and stuff while I was watching it, mm. and it wouldn't have translated real well in, like, the mid-90s. I feel like this kind of stuff is so popular now, you yeah. actually can do this here at this point. yeah. And we are desperate for more serious animation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is, and I think this. I bring is, this up every time, but yeah, and like at least in Japan, I think right now, or at least in the past like ten years, has been like the best era for Japanese uh, romance, like really in like manga and anime. Um, like this was really good. In my opinion, like, I I really enjoyed this. I I am. I'm trying to decide where I want to go right now. I am struggling to articulate why I was affected the way I was affected by this movie. So, I this this really hit me in a place, and I wasn't sure how I felt about it through a lot of it. I like we said, we were blindsided by the twist, mm-hmm. and we had to pause the movie to take care of something. And Jason was like, wait, we still have an hour left? Like, what What do you even do with another hour in this movie? And this is before we realized that she was from the past and her village had blown up. Yeah. And 
I, as soon as we unpause it, it's like a minute and a half later we find out what the twist is, and then I'm like, oh, there is, I, there's a lot of movie left, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, because uh, it's not just this, like, like, you know, goofy, uh, standard comedic conceit. Yeah. And I will say, it is a conceit. Yes, it is. Um, there is a pseudo explanation for it, but ultimately what exactly it is is not important. But it's not as broad of a conceit as, like, a liar liar or something. Yeah, and it takes it in, like, different ways than you would expect and, like, (sighs) twists and turns it and, like, makes it, uh, kind of, it's still, it makes it still a conceit, but, like, more of just, like, like, it's a movie, you know, it has... Well, I'm just saying with the, with the premise... Uh, of of the body switching, right? That um, is. <laughs> so th- this was kind of a cross between two movies that we've actually done on request. I uh, and you haven't seen either of these, I don't think, Jason. Uh, and I wish Austin was here for this because I'm curious to know how how he would have felt about it. Um, but not that I'm wishing I wasn't reviewing this with you. I uh, but Austin will know what I'm talking about because he watched these movies too. I. Uh, so I was reminded, but not until the end, uh, very much of Before Sunrise, the first of the Before Trilogy, which I I adore now and uh, is, I think, maybe of what I've seen, uh, the best romantic film ever made. Mm. I This has it sort of backwards because that movie is two people meet and I uh, instantly have a connection and have a date that lasts in real time through an entire evening, and then at the end of the film, they may never see each other ever again. Mm. I, which really resonated with me because I had a somewhat similar thing happen to me when I was younger. And then this movie is two people uh, in this you know incredibly Im- implausible and impossible way uh, are kind of forced together but are completely separate. By the way, I love that the the big theme of this movie is union, and you have two people that are not able to come together until the very end. Like they like like they're they're struggling to be able to form a union. They can't even be in separate bodies together. Like, yeah. um, it's great. But anyway, um, you get to the end of the movie, and it is sort of like that where I uh, they they come together and they have this bond. And they don't understand why they have this bond, and maybe they'll, and, and this is where free will comes in, right? Where maybe they will uh, be proactive and actually try to form a relationship and maybe they'll just walk away from each other. Mm-hmm. And you've got that moment, but it comes at the end of this movie, like with Before Sunrise, you 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 have that moment where they make eye contact, will they, won't they? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the the future is in their hands, but they have no idea how important that moment is. Uh, I love that. So anyway, it's it's a it's a cross between that and a quirky comedic romantic film that we reviewed, a British movie uh, called About Time, with this conceit uh, of a another family of characters that have, for no reason anybody understands, uh, this ability to time travel, uh. and. So in this, she just randomly, unintentionally is switching bodies with this guy. In that, you go into a closet and you close your eyes and you can time travel. Oh. And so it felt like a cross between those two things. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. I. I would like to see, <clears throat> um, that before a movie at some point. Um. I don't know. I would let you watch at least that that first one. Yeah. Right now, yeah. Um, I have a question. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about how this movie starts, because I think it's kind of, like, it doesn't really show you what the rest of the movie's gonna be like, because it starts with... You don't think it establishes tone? It starts with the girl. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, the boy is, like, kind of the main character. Like, pretty much. Like, he's, he's... Ooh, I don't agree with that. I think they're, they're dual protagonists, clearly. 
and it's appropriate to start with her. It, it is it is odd on a first viewing how long it takes before we're actually uh, from his perspective, mm-hmm. but I think that's I, I think that's done intentionally to ease you into the premise without throwing at you so that the premise itself can be kind of a revelation. Oh no, we're body switching because if memory serves, you're you're with her. I uh, in an and I uh, no actually you're you're with her with two different people in her body so you start with her but then you jump to him but you don't know you've jumped to him it's mm-hmm. true and it's appropriate to start with her because she is actually the catalyst for it and doesn't know it mm-hmm. and it's more dramatic because she's the one that will that, that will find out is is you know has died yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't think he's the protagonist. I think that... I feel like he is, because I... I don't know, I... He... Uh, he... I felt like he had more to do, and because she was... Uh, just because he was also, like, the character in the present. Like, I don't know, I feel like that kind of adds to it and I also like I felt more for that character like I don't know okay well it makes sense that you're going to relate more to him certainly but right. I so yeah I, I, I get your argument but I feel like they both have a clear arc that's headed in the same direction yeah also um, I really like how he, he is in his way more of the eyes in character but he has to be she's dead yeah um also I I really like how this movie has likable characters because I have read, at least, like, read a lot of uh, romance uh, series and, uh, like, rom-coms and stuff where the character, where at least, like, the female character is just, like, you can't even relate at all to her because she is really annoying and doesn't like anyone or anything like complains of everything all the time yeah i'm reading through uh nisekoi right now and it's great but the female character is just like she won't shut up and she (laughs) won't stop yelling at everyone and i'm like stop so and again i don't don't mean to be a broken record but i i'm always careful not to judge that kind of thing too quickly now i can have my own opinions about whether or not i enjoy it certainly Mm -hmm. uh but i try not to be too quick to judge uh before i've spent a lot of time with uh, this kind of material in a different culture because it seems like that's played for comedy a lot over there. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't get it, but... Yeah. You know, in the same way that uh, this movie does have, in its way, kind of a sappy ending, but it works for this. Like, it's that kind of movie. Yeah. And some other things I might complain that it, it reads a little bit too like forcefully tear jerky or something and it just in this context like i'm taking it on some terms really easily i'm not struggling to do that yeah um god i got about 19 different directions i want to go um yeah go ahead um i think the uh because we watched the dub i was about to bring that up yeah yeah um the uh american the english voices are really good yeah it's spectacular um so the guy who voices the boy, uh, Taki, uh, he is Leonardo in 03 Ninja Turtles. Is that right? That is who that is. Crazy. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And I was, because, like, I knew, I knew his voice, but I couldn't, like, I, I, I couldn't match it. Uh, we should mention, by the way, it, so it, as far as the dub goes, uh, yeah, there wasn't a part of me that ever wanted to flip over to the sub. I go back and forth. Sometimes dubs just don't feel appropriate to the, to the material. Uh, I was at no point distracted by that and having to remind myself that there is an original track. It all felt like it was of the original piece. Yeah. And 
if you actually know the Japanese, there's there's always you know different performances. It might watch differently, but as I'm watching it, I it, it feels like this is probably how it came out in the first place, and I really appreciated that. Um, this is a weird minor point, but something else I appreciated because this never happens, at least with the stuff that I've watched, is if you watch this with subtitles, the subtitles for the most part actually match the dub, yeah. and very often you get two different translations, which is really distracting if you if you watch with subtitles. Yeah. And just to make sure that I get names and I, I'm, I'm not, you know, making mistakes about what happens in the story and stuff. When I'm doing things for review, I tend to watch things uh, uh, with subtitles. Mm-hmm. And it was nice that those matched. I didn't notice a discrepancy until the last, like, five minutes. And I was like, oh, crazy, this whole time they've been the same. There was one <clears> point <throat> where I noticed it was different, where he said, he said chest and... The subtitles read as heart. That was what I that that was the one I noticed, and that was yeah. in the last five minutes. Really, I thought it was or maybe like the, the last, last 20. Like 15, twenty. That was no, that was during the magic hour scene. Yeah, that was during. That's where that was. Yeah, or may, maybe in like the part where he was slowly forgetting. Yeah, her. I think it was that scene, which almost made me cry. Like that was. I that's teared up at the end. Such a good scene. I I absolutely did, and and that's what I started to say a minute ago is. I'm struggling to explain why this hit me in a place the way it did. Mm. I, like, I don't know how much any individual aspect of this personally resonates with me on paper. Mm -hmm. Um, There's this universal component to this that I feel like, and, and, and I don't mean to say that, you know, like every person that watches this will necessarily have the same response I did to it. I mean, it's ninety eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It was huge in Japan. People do seem to really like this film and think that it's a masterpiece or a near masterpiece. Um, I don't know that I would make the masterpiece claim, but I mean, it's 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 quite good. Yeah, it is. Um, but there's just something about the way these two people find each other and the, the the fact that, like, they might not come together and just how earnest it is about everything. Uh, I Like, like the, the struggles that he goes through in trying to save her life. Um, and I, I, I just think that I, a lot of the gender stuff really rings true yeah. without being real superficial about it. Uh, there's just this real believable quality to all of it. And then some of it is also just how insanely pretty it is. Yeah, it looks really good. Like, the animation is gorgeous. And I also thought it was interesting that it's a movie with these, like, lush landscapes that is also sometimes about landscapes. Like, it's not just yeah. putting stuff on screen to look cool and to look... Re- There's some, like, photorealistic uh, landscape shots. Yeah. Uh, do you remember that shot toward the end uh, in the rain? It was almost like a noirish kind of shot uh, of, like, the cobblestone streets and stuff. Like, yeah. it was photorealistic. Yeah. It, it really looked good. almost like a photo... Like, like somebody took a picture of it. It was, it was really weird. There was a specific spot. I, yeah. It, it was in this movie. Um... Where, like, everything looked really realistic, and, like, you looked at the sky, and uh, she was, like, looking at the sky and looking at the clouds, and, like, it looked really realistic, and then the clouds were, like, circles. Yeah. And I was like, oh, right, this is an anime movie. I forgot that this was even animated. Yeah, and it's interesting, the, the balance that it strikes with that, where it's not always like super realistic like that right but it all fits together yeah and um but it's but it's really pretty like the the kinds of shots that that might make you tear up and you don't know why where it's not even about what the movie's about it just i don't know this is gonna sound like like real sappy but and i haven't had a lot of a lot of movies do this to me but it made me want to go out in nature Mm. Again, it's it's difficult to describe. It's just it, it had almost like this, um, this like inherent appreciation of, I uh, like like natural beauty in 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 again in its landscapes and stuff, which is interesting because the movie was 
inspired by the sheer number of natural disasters that happen in Japan. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why he made this. Mm. And you remember I said that to you at one point where I was like, oh, it's weird this is a comet because in real life it would be like, it would be a tsunami or it would be a, an earthquake. Yeah. Um, apparently the comet is supposed to be just like all the natural disasters that happen in Japan. Mm. And I kind of like the idea that it comes from space because it's like, Japan is so unlucky with these things that if it's going to hit any place on the planet, it's going to be this the, the, the tiny island of Japan. See, and it, it just made me want to go to Japan. Like, that's... Yeah. Well, I have that with a lot of these things. Yeah. But, like... Especially this. There, there's these shots that linger a long time on sky and trees and, uh, and, and, and water, and it's never boring. No. Right. Like, I love the way this movie breathes. You're yeah. just You're just living in it. Yeah. And it seems to be that, like, the best, uh, like, manga and, and uh, anime art um, is a lot of the time, like, romance. Like, um, right now, the big ongoing romance series, uh, Blue Box, about uh, badminton and basketball and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah, you told me about like, that. Like, the prettiest art you'll you'll find uh that's going on right now like it's really pretty and that's like the reason to read it it's like they're pushing these visual envelopes where somebody might say it's about two people standing in a room talking you can't make that dynamic yeah you know it, you, you should just put a camera on it or you should just write a novel and it seems like Japan is constantly trying to push that envelope of, no, we can make anything uh, visually interesting and visually story-driven. And I had this that with this where there were... Uh, and I had this with Perfect Blue, uh, where there, there's, a, there's a number of scenes where I have to remind myself that I'm not watching... Uh, an actual human being doing a thing because the way they're moving is so natural mm. and you can't even believe what they've remembered to animate and the corners they're not cutting. Yeah. But then I I read this interview with, with uh, Shinkai where he was uh, like, like really self-critical mm. where he was like, as much as people are loving this movie, I... I think I think the plot is fine, but it's not perfect. And if we'd had more than two years, we could have done better. Mm. Like he wasn't fully happy with it. Wow. And also, they made this in two years. <laughs> yeah. How do you how do you make this piece in two years? That's true. <clears throat> and yeah, you know, I, I just wonder how big the animation team was and how like burning the candle at both ends it was. Uh, we talked about this with Godzilla Minus One, uh, that a lot of Japanese movies look as good as they do because they've got uh, a staff that they just work to the bone, and there's a lot of problems there apparently with um, you know not paying the workers enough and stuff. And that's really unfortunate. It's sad, but like all all the work put into it really shows. Yeah, in a way that it doesn't over here with very often with overworked uh, CGI designers. With our blockbusters. Yeah, it doesn't. And it kind of, I mean, it is really cool when it does, you know, like, uh, like Spider-Verse and stuff like that. Yeah. But especially with, like, live action, it doesn't really show, like, well, and like I know that, and stuff. I know that superhero is starting to fall out of favor with people, but it took the genre that dominated for over a decade for us to finally do a serious uh, animated film in the States, in the theater, that people actually went and watched. Like, okay. you know, you want that for things like this, or at least, you know, for some science fiction. And I know that Netflix has done some things, but it, it, it'd, be, it'd be nice for those things to be more mainstream. Do you have any idea in Japan how mainstream this movie is? It's pretty mainstream, It's right? so fascinating, just the different worlds that we live in. We're over there... I uh, this movie is 
like as mainstream as it gets and I didn't and I hadn't heard about it until it was requested. I uh, so it has the second biggest theatrical run I uh, for a Japanese movie, not an anime, a Japanese made film. Wow. The the second biggest next to Spirited Away. Okay. Yeah. It is the like fourth or fifth biggest movie over there of all time. Wow. So there's a couple of American movies that beat it out. Mm-hmm. And it is apparently the first non-Miyazaki animated film there to do more than $100 million. Wow. That's crazy. Those are all numbers that I that I read that I thought were, were really interesting. Yeah. Uh, Rico the Solis mentions uh, the obligatory live action an, uh, uh, adaptation that was announced a few years ago that has been in, de- in American adaptation, uh, which I can't help but think would turn out like a Death Note or something. I uh, that was announced a few years ago, and it is in. It seems to be in, in development hell, and I'm hoping it stays there because it's Abrams and Bad Robot. Mm. And I don't want those guys to get their hands on this. Yeah, and it for a little bit was going to be directed by Mark Webb, but yeah, then they changed I saw that. it. Yeah, but it's one of those things where people director. There's a revolving door, and directors keep leaving over, yeah. uh, over creative disputes. Yeah, so hopefully that doesn't ever happen. Yeah, and this is one of those things where could you make a good live a- action adaptation? Sure. I don't know what the point is. What's the point? I mean... And I could say that about anything, but especially this, like... I mean, maybe, I guess, to make it more popular over here? Like, maybe that's... To get people here to actually look at it? Yeah. But the problem is, it's in a genre that has not sold well in a long time. That's true. That's true. And what we tend to do with this kind of thing is we try to make it look you know, sort of stylized and as much like the anime as possible, and then you go, but you have the anime. Right. No, I mean, and they do it, like, they do it for everything now, and it kind of sucks. Like, why? Yeah, and I don't mean to be against these kinds of things on principle. Like, sometimes something will come out and you'll be really surprised. But apparently people are liking the live-action One Piece. Like, Mm. there's... You know, and, and I've heard mixed things on the the new live action uh, uh, Avatar. Some mm-hmm. people are really happy with that. Some people aren't. But um, I don't know when it's already. It's like it's sort of like the the, the uh, you know Disney live action remake thing. Yeah. Where it's like when it's actually done well, it's kind of fun just to just as an exercise mm. to like see it attempted. But the problem is that over here, live action still kind of legitimizes everything. And the more that's done and and it's successful, the more Hollywood kind of says, well, we don't need to pay animators and you know spend the the time and money to uh, do that kind of stuff. Sure. And so, and so just every, everything is live action and kind of phoned in or, or, or can be phoned in. So I don't know. Um, with, with something like this, what's so impressive about it is that you've got these very real, believable feeling performances yeah. and in a, you know, stylized, but also really realistic feeling piece. Yeah. Uh, like that's, what's impressive about it. So you put live actors in it it doesn't, and, and it wouldn't. It wouldn't translate. It would just. It would have to be a, a somewhat different thing. What I would do is I would loosely adapt the story and make it a totally different thing. Yeah. No. Yeah. That. And maybe, like, sort of like Death Note did, except Death Note was terrible. But like, make it, make it a, you know, set in America. Do our version of it instead of what... adapting a. You know, adapt it, adapting it Japanese. That is what they were going to do with this, though. Is it? Yeah. But it probably would have been awful under that the, house. The I guy was going to be born in, like, Chicago or something. Okay. And the girl was going to be from, like, Europe or something. I don't know. About performances, I, one thing with the dub, 
that I I feel like we would be remiss in not mentioning because it's impressive is that you basically have two leads that each have to play the same two characters. Yeah. And it's easy to kind of forget that when you're listening to the the boy and the girl, they're each. And see, this this whole thing has me wanting a night's movie now. Yeah. With uh, with with Clarice. No, and, I was thinking that the same thing too. Yeah, and I think maybe that's one of the reasons it hit me like it did. I mm. uh, because I love this subject matter, like what, like like it's about dreams. Yeah, like. what dreams are? Are they a, are are they our connection to a uh, to to a spiritual world? And I don't necessarily believe in that, but it's an interesting thing to explore because it feels that way sometimes, right? Like, yeah. uh, it, it is a a in a world we don't understand, and it feels like uh, we're tapping into something beyond ourselves sometimes. When whenever we whenever we go to sleep, whenever we dream, uh, and it's been a thing I've been fascinated by since I was a kid. Uh, the first novel, like series concept I ever had was about was was about like dream walking. Mm. Um, I think I I wrote back in you know junior high. It's so, like I've always been interested in, in in this kind of kind of thing you know as a subject. Yeah. Uh, there's we're already at, at almost an hour somehow. Uh, I there's, there's all kinds of other things that we could talk about with this. Uh, soundtrack. It's it's a it's a beautiful score. It's um, a beautiful score. I want to pull it up and listen to it on its own and see how it how it plays by itself. Yeah, I don't really care about the J-pop stuff. Like, no, I, I honestly I could have done without some of that. Yeah, just just my own personal sensibilities. Uh, that was the, I'm glad you brought that up. That was the stuff that makes it feel sappy and not as good of a way. Right. <laughs> and that makes it feel not for me, where it, where it feels like it's. I uh, aimed at kids out that that I I can't understand because of where I am in my life now, I. Uh, but you kind of had that too. I I did, and I mean I I'm fine with that kind of music, but I didn't think it fit with the story. Like it didn't fit with what they were trying to do. No, and it feels like to me anyway. I kind of pushing the the feels too hard, you know? Uh, where it's like, you don't really need to be any more emotional and manipulative you've got me already, you know? You're almost protesting too much. Uh, Jujira put in a $10 super chat and says, Funimation or whoever distributed it in the U.S. pushed it for Best Animated Feature Oscar, but it didn't get nominated when Boss Baby won. That's not super surprising. Yeah. I mean, it, that's, that's sad, it's unfortunate, but uh, we don't uh, give enough credit to this stuff over here, and it feels like the only name sometimes that anybody knows is Miyazaki, and you got these these other guys that are doing you know just as good quality work. Somebody earlier said that this is the first in a like kind of spiritual tr trilogy mm -hmm. from this guy, and that one of his other movies was also like as huge or almost as huge at the box office. Oh. Um, and I'm very interested in him now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Uh, I don't. I don't remember anybody's names right now because I'm. I haven't gotten really into this stuff yet. Uh, but the guy that uh, directed Perfect Blue and the other uh, movie about Hollywood that that Austin and I had to review, uh, and and this guy, I uh, are like fighting for uh, my my favorite director in this medium right now. And, and, and that's based on one movie. I don't need to see anything else to know this guy's a genius. Yeah. I will. I mean, I'd like to, certainly. Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, I think, I think some of it, in, in the, the, way it, the way it hit me uh, sideways, is, is also just the flavor of it, just the, just, the, just the tone of it. Like, I just, I really liked living in this world. Yeah. I, there is a, I, there's a curious shot the movie keeps doing that I feel like must be symbolic of something and I can't get a read on it. Mm. I 
about 27 times in the movie, you get the same shot of a sliding door coming at the camera. And every time somebody goes, and, and it's like in five or six different contexts, uh, coming out of a house, coming out of a train, coming out of a building. We do, it, o- train. We do yeah. it over and over and over again. We, and, and it comes and at you. Keep- and we keep doing scene transitions with it. And I don't know if it's just kind of a motif that I shouldn't read into, but this is a really thoughtful movie with a lot of... And I, and I don't mean to say that, you know, if you have a bunch of symbols, it makes your story good. It's just... It, it's thoughtful about those things. Yeah. And it, it, does, it does have some cool, like, motifs that you could read like that. What does that mean? It's got to mean something. Right. And, and like, I don't have a read on it. I kept, I kept being like, don't crush the camera. Like, <laughs> the heck? I'm going to do that to an elevator door. Oh, like... real quick. Um, a question I had is, what is the age difference between these two characters? Um, Did you have that thought? They... Think about it for a second. Think about it for a second. She died three years ago. Well, I mean, the age difference. Like, so when the age they difference now, like so when they meet, meet up at the end, end, are they three years apart, or are they supposed to be the same age? I I, I don't know. And I mean, the older you get, the less it matters. But what I'm saying is, in 2013 and 2016, respectively, are they the same age then, or is she younger than him? They are the same. So. Because we're not told, like, what grade they are in, in school or anything. So she would be, like, around like around the same age as him in 2013 as he is in 2016. So they are three or four years so, apart. So they're, like, three years apart? Because when they, when they meet on that train before she died, or before, I mean, she doesn't die the second time around, but before the uh, meteor hits. Right. I couldn't tell if they were trying to animate it so there was an age difference because they would be young enough. You there would be a, a a pretty stark difference, right? Right. It'd be like nine and twelve, or or like ten and thirteen, or you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, she was. Well, no, I mean, because well, I mean, in 2013, she would she would be in high school and he would be. Uh, but I thought in that second timeline they met earlier than that. Where like she was like a little girl. No, it's the no? same. No, is it the same? Okay. I, I wasn't totally sure. Yeah, um, she's probably like fifteen, sixteen. I think I think he is probably older than her. But like I don't know if they talk. Again, the older you get, the less it matters. Right. So like once you get into your like like five years out of high school, he he's he's twenty three. She'd be twenty. Like that's not that's not a big age difference at that point. Right. It was the thing I was curious about because I couldn't decide if the movie had thought about that. Right. Yeah. But anyway, I an, another thing real quick this will be my last point um but something the movie didn't make real clear to me i had to read this in a synopsis i uh, and i i didn't i didn't pick this up watching it i uh, was that the and i mean i guess you can piece it together i just didn't understand it on on first viewing um that we we didn't really talk about her i uh, like tragic backstory with the death of her mother and having yeah. to be raised by her grandmother and uh, her her father is the mayor and kind of um, receded into into politics or like 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 threw his his whole self into that and sort of ignored and abandoned his family. Mm-hmm. He is kind of redeemed apparently by actually listening to her advice and. Uh, evacuating the town so that hardly anybody gets hurt. I yeah. because uh, I don't know if you caught that at the end, but the idea is that in the first timeline, five hundred people die, and in the second timeline, almost nobody even gets hurt. Mm-hmm. So there's no deaths. Mm-hmm. We get that on, on like a news broadcast. Mm-hmm. But apparently, the idea is supposed to be that off screen, he finally listens to her and evacuates everybody. I didn't get that the, the, on, on our first view. Yeah, I. It's quick. <laughs> 
I and, like, we can't really tell. And quite understand that right away. Uh, but anyway, any other aspect of this you you want to hit before we Not really. get I mean, going? I kind of hit all the points that I wanted to hit. Uh, this is a Hall of Fame movie for me. Yeah. This will be one that I'll buy f- physically. And when I finally make my Hall of Fame shelf for request, I will put this on the Hall of Fame shelf. Yeah. Uh, right next to um, those other two movies I mentioned, which were all, also Hall of Fame movies. Mm. Um, um, not a matter of time. I, uh, about time. And uh, Before Sunrise. Mm-hmm. And interesting that, that, that this is... Uh, also about a, uh, a particular time of day when the sun is rising or setting. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, are we good? Yeah. I think we're uh, good. Thanks for reviewing it with me. Yeah. Thanks uh, it's, for letting me watch that. It's excellent. I'm, I'm glad that it one reply great. requested this. Uh, I don't even know if I... I mentioned his name at the beginning, right? You did not. Did I did I did I forget to say who requested this? You Apologies, but one reply requested this on Patreon. Uh, so thanks a lot to him. And Jujira said that this was on his list, so it's it, it, it's it's knocked out now, and he's glad that, that, that we already did it. Uh, Dan's Den, I have seen the before sequels, and maybe at some point I'll bring Connor on and we'll review the whole the whole trilogy. Uh, that last movie uh, hurt my feelings, and I don't know if I want to sit through it again. Mm. Uh, like, it, it is technically good, but it. It, it, it hit me in, in uh, it was it, it was uh, too close to home in certain ways and I had a tough time with that uh, but anyway uh, next time Austin and I are going to do something that I uh, just so folks know we're not regularly doing this is a request from th- th- this is another uh, old request that we never fulfilled because it was for the old uh, written re- rewind show and when I was uh, crazy enough to take requests for whole seasons of television I don't do that anymore. I don't have time to do that. I don't even do that for this show. Uh, but we had a request from uh, Jeffrey a long time ago for the first season of Legion, which is uh, eight episodes. Austin and I are going to finally watch that and do an overview discussion of that season. Okay. So it'll be like a pilot episode, uh, but we're going to go ahead and, and watch the rest of, of that season. I have seen that pilot. It's wonderful. I've always wanted to watch the rest of it. It gives me an excuse to do that. Uh, and we owe Jeffrey that for, from a long time ago. So th- this one is an exception to that rule. We're not usually going to promise a whole season of something, uh, but we are going to go ahead and try to do that this time if all goes according to plan for next Wednesday. Uh, apologies uh, for my voice and stuff tonight. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching, and we will see you again uh, real soon with more stuff here on Geek Uh Jason and I are going to come back on Friday night and do a commentary on the first three episodes of X-Men 97. Uh, we're going to do a watch party for that, I should say, and we're excited about that, although we will have already watched them. Right. And uh, tomorrow night is the Captain Logan show. So uh, come back and hang out with us, and we will see you again real soon with more streams. I was Captain Logan. I was Jason. Later, folks.